recording. Recording. Thank you. Okay, we're recording. We're ready to go. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us here at Epiphany Cathedral Catholic School's blessing of the Our Lady of Fatima Sacred Art Piece. We welcome you and thank you for joining in with us this morning on this very, very special day. We have several wonderful people that are with us, and I'd like to introduce them. We do have Father Richard, and we have Father Robert Belagati. We have Mrs. Leah Mim, who is our Director of Development. We have Nan Ross, our Registrar. And we have Tom and Nancy Murphy. And we're so grateful and glad that you were here, because today is a very special day. There is a beautiful background story leading up to how Our Lady of Fatima ended up in our possession. And I would not want to even begin to tell you that story because it did um, have a, quite a journey even before my arrival in July. And I want that story to, um, to be told by those individuals who were di directly responsible for having Our Lady of Fatima here with us today. Um, we are very, very excited about having Our Lady here. Um, I know that even when I first came in July, the second that I did come to the school, um, Nan Ross, our registrar, did point out that we had this beautiful piece of sacred art. And um, I know in my heart that I always wanted to have it properly framed. We were all thinking the same thing, but it, did, it was quite a process in getting it to that point. Uh, so I do want to have everyone share their, their wonderful story and the journey of Our Lady of Fatima. And um, it's important that everyone, you know, realize that that she is very special and um, she actually comes from a different country and uh, we're going to hear that story in a little bit and so before we begin we're going to have um, the fathers that please say a prayer an opening prayer yes so please join us thank you today is the feast of the most holy rosary i'd like to begin with a prayer that we conclude the rosary with the hail holy queen and let us say that together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Hail, Hail Holy, Holy Queen, Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, for banished children to thee. To thee we send our sighs, mourning and weeping with valley tears. Turn thou most gracious advocate, and I have mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clement, O loving, O most sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nan Ross, Miss Ross, Miss Nan, as you call me, and I'm here at the front desk. Before I tell you about how the Our Lady of Fatima journey to us. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I was consecrated to Our Lady more than 20 years ago. And consecration is a big word, but it simply means set aside for God through the hands of our Blessed Mother. And we call our Blessed Mother many names. We call her Mary, Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Lords, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of Heaven and Earth. There's several different names that we call her. If you think about it, you have different names. My entire name is Nan Claire Elizabeth Mary Zeta Ross, but most people just call me Nan. So we all have different names. Well, let's go to how Our Lady of Fatima came to be here at Epiphany Cathedral Catholic School. One early spring morning when we were all doing virtual learning, there was a ringing of the doorbell and I looked out and there were the Father's Belagati, and I was thrilled. <laughs> I was thrilled. So I was excited, and I went to the door and let them in, and they were joyful, and they said, we have a beautiful present of sacred art of Our Lady of Fatima for you. We wanted to go to the school children, specifically to the school children. And I said, wonderful. So they scurried out and went to get Our Lady, and she weighs quite a bit, right? Because mm -hmm. these are tiles from Portugal, and there's, I think, 36 of them. So she weighs, uh, they said, about 75 pounds. So anyway, um, so she came to be to um, the school that way through the Father's Belagati. And now they're going to tell the story of Our Lady of Fatima and how, how they received Our Lady of Fatima sacred art. Fathers, come on up. Good 
boys and girls and adults all present, we'd like to explain to you how we received the beautiful mural of Our Lady of Fatima. After 50 years of priestly service in the Rochester Diocese of New York State, we retired and moved here to Florida. We have been living in a condominium at Waterside Village for about six years now. Four years ago, we met a deeply devout elderly Catholic woman by the name of Eleanor Joy Marchlick. She also lived at Waterside Village in a condo near us. We became good friends with her and often we'd get together for desserts and we'd sing songs and we'd go in chants together. Eleanor Joy had been a cantor at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, and she had a beautiful piano in her condo and loved to play. We enjoyed singing together, and we delighted in this glorious mural of Our Lady of Fatima, which hung in Eleanor Joy's living room. She told us frequently how she and her husband, Tadjush, had brought this lovely, these lovely tiles of this mural at the Fatima Shrine in Portugal some 40 years ago. They had carried them in their luggage when they returned from Fatima to the United States. It was her husband that assembled the tiles and framed them to form this striking mural. Her husband died some 10 years ago here in Florida and she kept this mural to remember their deep faith experience of Our Lady of Fatima Shrine. When she required assisted living about two years ago, she had to move from Waterside Village to the gardens of Venice. She could not take this mural there because it was too large for her new accommodations. So she gave this precious mural to us since we had, had admired it so much. A year later, we chose to move from our second floor condo to a ground level one. We also could not bring this mural to our new condo since it did not have a cathedral ceiling like our second floor condo did. So we decided to give this mural to Epiphany Cathedral, our parish church. It was Father Jack Costello who graciously accepted it like a good pastor would and suggested that Epiphany School could use it we were overjoyed that Epiphany School students could view this fine mural and, and be inspired to pray. We wanted to thank the family also, who so graciously framed it even more splendidly for our parish school. The Lord always works wonders for those who love him and his blessed Mother Mary. Now all the people of our parish can see this mural as truly a gift to us all. Deo gratias, thanks be to God and Our Lady. Amen. Hi, I'm Leah Mim, the Director of Development, and a few weeks into being here, Nicole or Miss Lissetto had emailed asking to look for a donor um, to frame this beautiful work of art. Um, so I sent out um, an email to our parishioners and, and parish families, and um, within the hour, um, Tom and Nancy Murphy had emailed me back and said that they would like to um, pay for the framing in honor of, of uh, Nancy's sister, Lois. So we have it framed, and then we went and got a nice plaque um, made so everyone knows that this was dedicated to um, Lois Oswald and her family and her service to the church and her courage as a mother. So um, we look, thank you dearly for your donation. It's, it means so much to us, and, and I know it's such a wonderful way to honor your sister. So fathers, if you want to give maybe a short story about Our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. I'm Father Robert Malagotti. I'm the twin brother of Father Richard. He's the firstborn, that's why he always speaks first. You know. so, anyway. I thought it would be helpful for us to review a little bit 
uh, about what happened at Fatima. It was in 1917, Fatima, Portugal, that three children were tending sheep in this little grotto area. Lucia das Santos, Francisco, and Jacinta Marto, her cousins. Lucia was nine, Francesco eight, and Lucinda was six years old. After lunch, and a very simple lunch they had, they would pray the rosary together. When a flash of lightning interrupted their prayers, and they saw a bright light coming down and hovering over this oak tree. You can see the, the cloud here and the, and, and the bright light there, which was very beautifully done. Above it was a beautiful lady wearing a white robe, and she had in her hands a rosary. She asked the children to return to the same place on the 13th for the next five months, and she'd tell them her name. As she left them, she asked them to pray the rosary every day for world peace and do penance for sinners. She visited them again on June 13th, taught them the prayer that we say after the 10 Hail Marys in the rosary, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. When the lady came again in July, Lucia asked her to give a sign so that all people would recognize that she was there and she visited them. The lady promised a miracle when she would visit them in October. In August, the children missed their visit with Our Lady because they were kept in the office of a local administrator to answer questions about what was taking place at the grotto. In September, many people gathered there and witnessed a shower of white petals, and the lady asked that a chapel be built on the spot. And on October the 13th, thousands of people gathered, and rain drenched them all as the children came to meet Our Lady. She appeared to them and told them her name, Our Lady of the Rosary. Everyone was waiting for the sign that she promised. So as the sun broke through the clouds and dried them all off, the sun danced in the sky for people to see. This was the miracle of the sun. On this special day today, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, we find the true miracle of the Son of God, Jesus, by praying the Rosary. And we're drawn into his life, into the mysteries of our Lord's life, the mysteries that were shared by our Blessed Mother in a very special way. She, above all, was closest to her son. All during those years, when he grew up till he was 33, she was with him. And then she followed him in the public ministry for three, three years. Huh? She knew him well. And we know through these mysteries of our Lord's life that we pray in the rosary, why God became one of us to save us from our sins, to show us how much God loves us by dying on the cross for us. Through the rosary, Jesus, the Son of God, shines on us the mysteries of his life and love and all the blessings that come to us by praying the rosary. Pope Francis later declared Francesco and Jacinta Marto saints in 2017, though they both died very young 
by contracting the Spanish flu, the virus, similar to the one we're experiencing now. They were very dear to our Lord and to Jesus. They were very special children of God and of Mary, our mother. They prayed the rosary for long hours. Even when they were sick, they prayed the rosary. They fasted from water. They gave up meals for sinners. And Our Lady appeared, and her heavenly light was very, she embraced them in the light of her mantle, as it were, as a good mother would her children, bringing them all to know and love and serve her son. So these children teach us that we're all children of God, that we can become saints, especially children can become saints, that they're important. We don't think of that. Children can become saints. Lucia became a nun later on. She spent her life in adoration and prayer and reparation. She died in 2005 and was declared a servant of God by the church. And she told us this, Lucia, there is no problem, however difficult, that can't be solved by praying the rosary. I brought some holy water with me so we could bless the, the beautiful mural. <clears throat> this is a little prayer I, I composed. Let us pray. Good God, our Father, look upon us with tenderness and love. Pour out your blessings upon this beautiful image of Mary, Mother of God, and mother of us all. She appeared to Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta and told them her name, Our Lady of the Rosary. She asked them to pray the rosary every day for world peace. Dear God, our Father, give us hearts like yours, like Jesus and like Mary, full of kindness and mercy and forgiveness. Keep us all close to you, our Father, and to your Son, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, our Blessed Mother. Bless, too, all the students and teachers at Epiphany Cathedral School. Bless their parents and grandparents who show them the way to you. Especially Tom and Mary, is it? Nancy. Mary, how appropriate. Who have this beautiful frame added to this beautiful picture. May the graces and blessings and peace that Our Lady brought those children enter our lives today, enter our school. In thanksgiving, we make this prayer to you, God our Father, with great love and trust. Amen. 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 Oh, all right. We'll conclude by singing this Hail Mary, which we learned as little students in our catechism classes at St. Mary of the Lake Church, Watkins Glen, New York. It was taught us by Father Eamon, who wrote the music down for us. So we'll sing it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you all for welcoming us here. God bless you. And again, I just want to conclude and thank everyone for being here today. I want to thank uh, uh, Ms. Nan Ross for bringing um, the story of Our Lady to my attention. Uh, I know that if it wasn't for her, her kind and gentle soul and her persistence and in having her frame that we would not be here today. So I, I do appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate um, the fathers, uh, for Robert and Richard Belagati, for not only sharing the story of um, the history of Our Lady of Fatima, um, but the story as to how she ended up in your possession, and that you so graciously brought her to us, and we thank you for that very much. I also thank Tom and Nancy Murphy for um, donating the frame to have her framed here in honor of your sister. And I understand today is her birthday. Today's her birthday. So that was very interesting as well. That connection is that we had um, invited them to join us for the blessing for today. And we came to find out that um, it was Nancy's sister's birthday on the very same day um, that we were actually mm -hmm. doing the blessing. So mm -hmm. that is really beautiful for our lady in the rosary. Wonderful. So we thank you very much for everything. We, and we thank Miss Leah Mim for yeah. basically organizing all of this and, you know, making sure that, um, you know, that she had a proper home and that, you know, she reached out to people that would uh, be interested in, in, in giving us this special piece um, basically framed so we could have it in the office. You know, I do encourage... Uh, Again, the students here, the teachers, everyone who would like to see Our Lady to please come to the office. We can certainly schedule times for the classes to come and, and see her and visit her. Uh, knowing that Our Lady finally has a home here has warmed our hearts and has given us an inner peace. She is loved and appreciated by all to admire and enjoy. And again, we thank you very much for joining us. And we thank um, Mr. Uh, Rivers and Mr. Mackey for... Um, basically being able to virtually show this to everyone. Um, so this way nobody would miss out on anything. And uh, I thank you again for all for joining us and I appreciate it. And uh, God bless and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you.